الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد in our previous class we were reading what the author he's mentioning رحمه الله تعالى with regards to the evidence is clarifying the creed of أهل السنة والجماعة with regards to the belief in Allah سبحانه وتعالى الإيمان بالله تبارك وتعالى الإيمان and we have seen a number of issues with regards to this great pillar, which is the foundation of foundations and the pillar of pillars. And all of the rest of the foundations and principles of faith are based upon this pillar and returning back to it. And this is clear in the narration of Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam, whenever the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam was asked about al-iman. And he said, And tu'mina billahi. وَمَلَائِكَتِهِ وَكُتُوبِهِ وَرُسُولِهِ Until the end of it. It is that you believe in Allah and His angels and His books and His messengers. In reference clarifying that the foundation and the greatest fundamental is to believe in Allah. And the rest of the affairs of creed and belief are following in line in accordance with the belief in Allah. Believing in His angels. Believing in His books. Believing in His messengers. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, believing in the last day, in the meeting of Allah, believing in the decree of Allah. All of these other issues, they are returning back to the great principle and foundation and fundamental of believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have seen that this includes believing in the lordship of Allah, meaning that Allah alone, he is the creator and the sustainer and the provider and the disposer of the affairs of this entire universe and that he is the one who has supreme authority and command and ownership over this entire life and everything belongs to him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala is under his will, authority and command. And likewise, we have seen that believing in Allah means to single him out for his beautiful names and lofty attributes of perfection. And we have seen that this means like Imam Ahmed, he mentioned, Rahimahullahu ta'ala and nasifallaha bima wasafa bihi nafsahu wa bima wasafa bihi rasooluhu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam la natajawazu al-Qur'an wal hadith That we describe Allah with that which he has described himself with and that which his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has described him with and we do not go beyond the Quran or the Hadith. Nasifu Allah bima wasafa bihi nafsahu wa bima wasafa bihi rasooluhu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam la natajawazu al-Qur'an wal hadith La natajawazu al-Qur'an wal hadith We do not go beyond the Quran nor the narrations of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because believing in Allah and his names and attributes is from the affairs of the unseen and the only way to have certain information with regards to this is that we have been informed by way of revelation and that is in the Quran and the authentic sunnah and anything besides that is mere conjecture and guessing and following whims and desires with no evidence and proof and it's not allowed to speak about Allah or any of the affairs of the unseen without any evidence or any proof, without any evidence or any proof. So the people of knowledge, they mention Barakallah Fikum as we review briefly, as we review briefly a number of these important principles that we discussed in our previous class. And from believing in Allah, this principle that we're discussing now, and from believing in Allah, وَمِنَ الْإِمَانِ بِاللَّهِ الْإِمَانُ بِمَا وَصَفَ بِهِ نَفْسَهُ فِي كِتَابِهِ And to believe in that which Allah has described Himself with in His book, from those beautiful names and lofty attributes of, of perfection. We affirm that which Allah has affirmed for Himself, and we deny that which Allah has denied for Himself in a manner befitting His Majesty subhanahu wa ta'ala. We affirm for Allah what He has affirmed for Himself in a manner befitting His Majesty subhanahu wa ta'ala and we deny that which Allah had denied from Himself from uh, traits of weakness and uh, from weakness and and defect. And we affirm the opposite of that in perfection for Him subhanahu wa ta'ala and likewise nasifuhu bima wasafa bihi rasuluhu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we affirm and describe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the traits and characteristics that his messenger has described him with sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and here are the points. 
من غير تحريف ولا تعطيل ومن غير تكييف ولا تمثيل. These are the المحاذير الأربعة. المحاذير الأربعة. The four things that we must be cautious from and avoid when we're discussing الإيمان بالله سبحانه وتعالى. من غير تحريف ولا تعطيل. Without distorting the meanings. We affirm these attributes for Allah in the manner that they have come. من غير تحريف. Without distorting the meaning, without misinterpreting the meaning, without changing the meaning from its apparent uh, understanding in the Arabic language. From its apparent understanding in the Arabic language. We do not change the Arab, we do not change the huruf, and we do not change the meanings. We do not change or distort the meanings. And likewise, من غير تعطيل, and we do not deny them likewise, whether we affirm them in a manner befitting the majesty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We affirm them in a manner befitting the majesty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's very, it's very easy to understand and to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever he affirmed for himself in his book, we affirm that. How do we affirm that? In a manner befitting his majesty. كَمَا يَلِيْهُ بِجَلَالِهِ وَعَظَمَتِهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى As for how the reality of that attribute is, we do not know because Allah he did not inform us of that. Allah he informed us that he hears and that he sees and that he knows and that he's merciful and that he loves and that he hates and that he's kind and that he forgives. How these attributes are with regards to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he did not tell us. Allah, he informed us that he, has, that he has eyes and that he has hands. And Allah, he informed us that he has a face, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, he did not inform us how these attributes are. But he has clarified that there's nothing like unto him. There's nothing comparable nor resembling him whatsoever, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Laysa kamithlihi shay, wa huwa as samiru Al-Basir. So we affirm all of these attributes that Allah he affirmed for himself and that his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam affirmed for him in a manner befitting his majesty. How, does, how is his face in a manner befitting his majesty? Allahu alam. But we affirm that for him because Allah he affirmed that for himself. How are his hands? Allahu alam. Kayfiyat al But we affirm them for him in a manner befitting his majesty. Allah lahu yadani. Tariqani bi jalalihi wa azamatihi subhanahu wa ta'ala in a manner befitting his majesty. La tushbihani aidi al makhluqin. They do not resemble any of the hands from anything from the creation. So we affirm the attributes without likening them to the creation. And we free Allah from any resemblance or any weakness or deficiency without denying the attribute. Isbatun bila tamthil wa tanzihun bila ta'thil. تَنزِيهٌ بِلَا تَعْفِيهٌ So there's no تَحْرِيف and there's no تَعْفِيهٌ وَمِنْ غَيْرِ تَكْيِيفٍ وَلَا تَمْثِيلٍ تَكْيِيف is to ask how or to mention how. How are the attributes? And this is also forbidden and not allowed to say how, or, how is the eye. How, or the eye is like this to try to think of how or to try to come up with an explanation and the likes like this. Rather the answer for how the attributes are is simple in this manner. كَمَا يَلِيكُ بِجَلَالِهِ وَعَظَمَتِهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى This is the answer for all of them. So we affirm them in a manner befitting His Majesty. We affirm them in the most complete and perfect way in the manner befitting His glory, His honor, and majesty. سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى As for the reality of that, then this is entrusted to Allah. And Allah alone, He knows that reality. He knows that reality. And likewise, we do not resemble any of His attributes to the creation, to the creation. When we write the temthi, we do not resemble them to the creation whatsoever. Rather, the original, the original attribute, we know the meaning of that attribute in the Arabic language, and that name is shared. That name is shared with the creation and the creator, and the original understanding is shared. But as for the reality and how that is, then uh, each one is according to what it's ascribed to. So the ability to hear, for example, the creation has that ability. Some of the creation has that ability, and the creator, he likewise, has that ability. But each one is accordingly. And the ant hears differently than the fish, and the fish hears differently than the human being, and the human being hears differently than the cat, so on and so forth. So these things, they all share the issue or the ability of hearing, yet all of them hear in a different manner and they're not similar. So if this is affirmed in the creation that they have this attribute, yet they all differ in its reality, then even more great for the creator that he affirmed for himself that he has that attribute 
but likewise not like anything from the creation. Not like anything from the creation, different in entirety from the creation. Whether Allah he hears in the most complete and perfect manner, in a manner befitting His Majesty, in a manner befitting His Majesty. So the issue of hearing is shared. And the original understanding of hearing in Idraq al-Aswat, to, to hear the sounds, this is, this, is a, a common, this is a common idea that is shared. But as for the reality of how that is, then no doubt it is completely different. And the way that Allah hears is not like the hearing of anything in the creation, of anything in the creation. So this is an example of how to understand all of the attributes, bi-ithnillahi ta'ala, more of these issues will come and uh, the author now he's mentioning text after text ayah after ayah and then soon likewise narrations that clarify our belief in Allah using these texts to clarify because this is what Allah he has mentioned about himself so all of these texts here they're going to be discussing either the lordship of Allah or the beautiful names and lofty attributes of perfection of Allah or the right of Allah to be worshipped alone or maybe some of these texts here will contain all of them or some of them but each one of these verses here is clarifying the realities of a tawheed and this is the point because we believe in the tawheed of Allah نوحد الله سبحانه وتعالى بأفعاله في ربوبيته سبحانه وتعالى ونوحده تبارك وتعالى بأسمائه الحسنى وصفاته العليا ونوحده ونخصه بالعبادة سبحانه وتعالى فنعبده وحده لا شريك له لا شريك له so the previous narration that the author he mentioned, uh, he said, وَنُؤْمِنُ بِأَنَّهُ لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٌ وَهُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْبَصِيرُ لَهُ مَقَالِيدُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ يَبْسُطُ الرِّسْقَ لِمَنْ يَشَأُ وَيَقْدِرْ إِنَّهُ بِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ عَلِيمٌ That Allah, he says, there is nothing like unto him, and he is the all-hearer, the all-seer. And he is the all-hearer, the all-seer. And we have discussed the principles with regards to this and the importance of this portion of this verse. And then he mentions, subhanahu wa ta'ala, to him belong the keys of the heavens and the earth. And this is from the Lord, Lordship of Allah Azza wa Jal. Everything in the heavens and the earth belongs to him. The rububiyya has many meanings. From them, al-khalq, wal-razq, and also al-mulk. And this is what's being referred to here. Lahu maqalidu samawati wal-ard. Yani lahu mulku samawati wal-ard. Everything in the heavens and the earth belongs to him. He created, he provided for, he sustained, and he has control and authority over it. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a refer reference to his power, to his authority, to, to his command, to his dominion, to his greatness, to his majesty. Nothing happens in his creation except with his permission. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, Allah, he says, يَبُسُوتُ الرِّزْقَ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ وَيَقْدِرْ That he enlarges the provision for whom he wills and he, and he straightens it. And yet Allah, he provides without measure for whom he wills, provision. Any from the physical provision of the wealth and the health and, 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 and the children and the family and the physical provision that we see. And likewise, Allah, he provides the spiritual provision. Any that provision of beneficial knowledge and guidance to the straight path. And this is the greatest of provision. The greatest of provision is to be provided, is to be provided with insight and beneficial knowledge so that you will be able to see the truth. And, even, and, and along with that, the light and guidance to implement that and to apply it in one's life. This is all from the provision. This is all from the provision. يَبْسُوتُ الرِّزْقَ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ وَيَقْدِرُ وَيَقْدِرُ And he straightens for whom he wills. Allah, he provides for whom he wills without measure, without measure and he refrains and restrain, and he refrains from providing for whom he wills uh, according to his, his knowledge, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and his wisdom, according to his supreme knowledge and ultimate wisdom. إِنَّهُ بِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ عَلِيمٍ Indeed, he is the, certainly, he is the all-knower of all things. All of these are from the, the clarification of the greatness of Allah and His Majesty. This is all here at Tawheed al-Ilmi. At Tawheed al-Ilmi. This verse here is all about at Tawheed al-Ilmi, which requires for a person who understands and realizes these affairs to act, to act, to surrender and to submit to Allah alone and to seek provision from Allah alone and to rely and to put one's trust upon Allah alone and to worship Allah alone and to fear Allah alone. Allah, He is the one who has knowledge of all things. Allah, He is the one who has the keys to all goodness in His hands and the authority and the command over the entire creation. So then a person, he will attach his heart to Allah with love and hope and fear and trust and reliance. The author, he continues, he says, وَنُؤْمِنُ بِأَنَّهُ وَنُؤْمِنُ بِأَنَّهُ وَمَا مِنْ دَابَةٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ إِلَّا عَلَى اللَّهِ رِزْقُهَا وَيَعْلَمُ مُسْتَخَرَّهَا وَمُسْتَوْدَعَهَا كُلٌّ فِي كِتَابٍ مُبِينٍ And uh, there is no moving, 
There's no moving or living creature is there on earth, but its provision is due from Allah. Any in reference again to the rububiyah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah, He is the provider. Allah, He provides for all of the creation, the animals and the plants and all of the existence, human being and the likes, the jinn, all of them are provided for and sustained by the provider and sustainer, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. This is from His actions and His right, and this is what He does. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is the provider, providing for all of the creation in entirety. For all of the creation in entirety. There's no creature. There's no creature. There's no living being in the earth except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is providing for it. It's due from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He knows its dwelling place and its, and its deposit. Yani in the uterus or in the grave. All is in a clear book. Yani in the book of decrees. Kullun fi kitabin. Mubin, yani Allah al mahfuz. And likewise, the author he says, Wa nu'minu bi annahu. And we believe likewise that Allah is, Wa indahu mafatihu al ghaybi la ya'lamuha illa hu. Wa ya'lamu ma fi al barri wa al bahar. Wa ma taskutu min waraqatin illa ya'lamuha. Wa la habbatin fi dhulumat al ardi wa la ratabin wa la yabisin illa fi kitabin mubin. And with him, meaning with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, are the keys of all that is hidden. None knows them but he. وَعِنْدَهُ مَفَاتِحُ الْغَيْبَ لَا يَعْلَمُهَا إِلَّا هُ This is clarifying the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of his supreme knowledge. That Allah, he has knowledge of all things. He has knowledge of all that is hidden. To him are the keys. With him are the keys of all that is hidden. None knows them but he. And he knows whatever there is in the land and in the sea. And he, everything in the land and everything in the sea, all of it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has complete and encompassing knowledge of every aspect of that. Not a leaf falls, but he knows it. Not a leaf. And not even a leaf falls, except that he knows it. Not even a leaf in Georgia or in California, or in Saudi or in Al Mamlaka Arabiya Saudi or Indonesia or in Yemen, any land. There's no leaf that falls from any tree at any time, at any place, in any circumstance or situation, except that Allah has encompassing knowledge of all of that. He knows when it's falling, how it's falling, where it's falling, whether it's withered and dry, whether it was green and, and vibrant. He knows all of that subhanahu wa ta'ala in uh, the most intricate detail. But so there is no not a leaf falls. But he knows it. There is not a grain in the darkness of the earth, nor anything fresh or dry, but it is written in a clear record. Not a grain, any a grain, the smallest grain, the smallest seed in the earth, and in the darkness of the earth, and the darkness of the ground, and the soil, and the lights like this, except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he knows it. This is a clarification of the encompassing knowledge of Allah Azza wa Jal. So from the attributes of our Lord is that he is the all-knowing, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He knows everything about you and I. He knows everything that, that has happened and everything that will happen. And he knows everything that did not happen. It, if it had happened, how it would happen. If it had happened, how it would happen. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, allamul ghuyub. He is the, 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 the knower uh, of all things. The knower of all things. So the more... We learn about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more we should fear Him. The more we should fear Him. And whenever we learn that nothing is hidden from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we should fear Him even more. And revere Him even more. And strive to draw near to Him even more. مَنْ كَانَ بِاللَّهِ أَعْرَفْ كَانَ مِنْهُ أَخْوَفْ وَلِعِبَادَتِهِ أَطْلَبْ وَعَنْ مَعْسِيَتِهِ أَبْعَدْ The more one has knowledge of Allah, the more he will fear Him. And the more one fears Allah, the more he will seek nearness to him by obeying him. And the more he will refrain and stay far away from his disobedience. Refrain and stay far away from his disobedience. After this, the author, he says, وَنُؤْمِنُ بِأَنَّ اللَّهَ عِنْدَهُ عِلْمُ السَّاعَةِ وَيُنَزِّلُ الْغَيْثَ وَيَعْلَمُ مَا فِي الْأَرْحَامِ وَمَا تَدْرِي نَفْسٌ مَادَ تَكْسِبُ غَدًا وَمَا تَدْرِي نَفْسٌ بِأَيِّ أَرْضٍ تَمُوتِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَلِيمٌ Khabir. It's very suitable to mention this verse here now after uh, after that which uh, has proceeded because this verse here is in reality in the interpretation of the previous verse. Yani the, the mafatih al-ghayb, the keys to the unseen. Uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he has mentioned that it is these affairs here. Wa'induhu ilmu sa'a. And uh, with him, and with uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone is the knowledge of the hour. He sends down the rain 
and uh, knows that which is in the wombs, and no person knows that what he will earn tomorrow, and no person knows in what land he will die. Certainly Allah is the all-knower, all-aware of all things. So this again is clarifying the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, specifically the attribute of knowledge. And this has been mentioned that these are mafatihul ghaib, the keys of the unseen that only Allah knows. They're mentioned here. وَعِنْدَهُ ilmu sa'ah, And he has the knowledge of the hour. And no one knows the time of the day of resurrection except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one knows when it will, when it will occur. No one knows when it will occur, what day it will be. We have been informed that it's on Yawm al-Jumu'ah, but we do not know which day and what time that will be. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was asked whenever, when, when, when it will be. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he redirected this person to the proper question because this is something only Allah knows. And this is not, this is because this is something only Allah knows. And this is something that is not, uh, that does not concern us because Allah, he did not inform us. And this is not important to us when it will be, but rather what we prepare for it. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, وَمَاذَا عَدَتَ لَهَا And what did you prepare for it? So not to know when the hour is, but to prepare for the hour. So whenever it comes, a person, he has made the proper preparation. And the proper preparation will be with sincere faith and with righteous actions. بِالْإِمَانِ الصَّادِقِ وَالْعَمِلِ الصَّادِقِ بِالْإِمَانِ الصَّادِقِ وَالْعَمِلِ الصَّادِقِ With sincere and true faith and with the righteous and good deeds. In this manner, a person, he can prepare for the resurrection and the meeting of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah, he sends the rain from the sky. This is something that only Allah knows. And the fact that the people, that, that the scientists or those, uh, the, the, the scientists or the newsmen and the likes, the media, media, the media, how do you say the word? Meteorologist. <laughs> Sometimes your, your tongue is caught between Arabic letters and English letters and it doesn't come out right. Meteorologist, huh? like that? Meteorologist, and I say the ra with an R instead of a ra, and then inshallah, meteorologist. <laughs> Astaghfirullah. <laughs> they're those people that predict the weather, huh? So they, they're, they're only uh, predicting any in, a, in a small range, and this is only a prediction. And sometimes they're right and sometimes they're wrong, and it's based upon knowledge that they have been granted from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the instruments that they have and the likes like this, and they don't know exactly when it will come and where it will fall or how much. It will fall when it will stop, stop, or uh, when it will start, nor when it will stop. They have, they have uh, educated guesses. So Allah, He alone knows when it will come and where it will fall and how much, and, and the provision that will come from that and when it will stop, so on and so forth. This is something only Allah knows. And He knows that which is in the wombs. It is only Allah Azza wa that knows that which is in the wombs. As for the scientists today, being able to determine whether it's male or female, this is after the, the fetus has been given life and uh, that child in the womb now has been taken out of the realm of the unseen into the realm of the seen. Because at this time, they are able to determine whether it's male or female. That's after the angel has come and given it life and it has been written, been written for it whether it's going to be uh, whether it's going to be uh, good or bad or how long and the like like this as is clarified in the hadith of Abdullah bin Mas'ud we all know the narration so the angel is sent at this time after this period after this period the 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 after the 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 fetus ha has grown from the from the mixed fluid into the blood clot into the flesh then after that after this period here of approximately 120 days then the angel is sent and then the angel is sent and he's sent with uh, his provision and with his uh, period in his life and whether he's miserable or whether he's happy, whether he's miserable, whether he's happy. So at this time, the angel has been informed of uh, the reality of that which is in the womb. So now that which is in the womb has been taken from, from, the, from the aspect of the unseen to the seen because now the angels have been informed. So if the angels have been informed, then it's very possible for human beings likewise to be informed. So this is not contrary to what is mentioned here. It is only Allah who knows truly what is in that womb from the time of conception. From the time of conception. As for whenever it reaches a particular period or stage in the womb, now it comes to the... To the, to the aspect of being known by the creation, being known by the creation. So we should not be deceived by the modern technology because this is still 
clarified in these texts. Only Allah, he knows that which is in the wombs. He only knows how long the child will live, whether the child, even after that, whether the child will be born alive or dead, whether they be born healthy. And even sometimes they say it's a male and it comes out a female. Sometimes they're wrong. Sometimes they're, they're wrong. They're not certain. Likewise, they're still having a, a, a type of educated educated guess. So the point is to clarify the encompassing knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَا يَعْلَمُ نَفْسٌ مَا ذَا تَكْسِبُ غَدَى And no soul knows what it will earn tomorrow. And no one knows the unseen and what will happen tomorrow. And this is why a person, a believer, if he's going to do something in the future, he does not say, I'm going to do that. Rather, he say, insha'Allah. Rather, he will say, insha'Allahu sa'af'alu kada. Insha'Allahu sa'af'alu If Allah wills, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. Because maybe a person will change his mind or maybe something will happen and prohibit him from doing that which he had thought he wanted or intended to do. Only Allah knows what will happen in, in the future. No, only Allah knows what will happen tomorrow. This is from the affairs of, of the unseen. And no soul knows in what land it will die. It's been collected by a tabarani from the hadith of Usama ibn Zayd. That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, مَا جَعَلَ اللَّهُ مَيْتَةَ عَبْدٍ بِعَرْضٍ إِلَّا جَعَلَ لَهُ فِيهَا حَاجَةٍ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has never decreed that a person will die in a specific land except that he has placed in that person's heart a need to go there. A need to go there. And likewise, it has, been come, it has come in another wording. إِذَا أَرَادَ اللَّهُ قَبْضَ عَبْدٍ بِعَرْضٍ جَعَلَ لَهُ إِلَيْهَا حَاجَةٍ that if Allah, he intends to take the soul of a person in a particular land, he will cause that person to have a need to go there. He will cause that person to have a need to go there. This here, barakallahu fikum, clarifies the supreme authority and command. Wallahu qahiru fawqa ibadihi. Wallahu qahir fawqa Allah, he is powerful above all of his creation. Al-Wahid al-Qahar. You cannot escape him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whenever that time that he has written for you comes, and if you're not in that place that it's written for you to die, then you will have a need to go there, and you will go there regardless. And at that place and at that time, the angel of death will take your soul. The angel of death will take your soul. The command is the command of Allah. The authority is the authority of Allah. The creation is the creation of Allah. Our life belongs to Allah. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. No one knows where he will die, but everyone knows he will die. No one knows where he will die, but everyone knows he will die. And no one knows when they will die. And like the hour, it's not important to know when you will die. But what is important is to strive upon how you will die. How you will die. Not about when you will die or where you will die, but how will you die? Will you die upon obedience, upon piety, upon tawheed, upon sunnah, upon uh, the deen of Allah? Will you die upon listening to music and partying and having good, a good time and laughing and joking and being heedless and neglectful and following the desires and customs and whims of the people contrary to the guidance of the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? And the first one is successful and happy and everlasting bliss. And the second one is a failure and a loser and great misery and regret, and great misery and regret. So a believer, he must strive to die a good death by living a good life. By living a good life, to strive to have a good death, to die upon piety and upon goodness, then one he must live upon piety and goodness. Because a person, he will die what he lives upon, and he will be resurrected upon what he dies upon. Upon what he dies upon. So the point is here that Allah, he has encompassing knowledge, and likewise encompassing authority. And no one can escape him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the most high and the most great. He is the most high and the most great. This issue here, وَمَا تَدْرِي نَفْسٌ بِأَيِّ أَرْضٍ تَمُوتِ That no, and no soul knows what land it will die in. This is something to reflect and to ponder over and to realize the majesty of Allah and His greatness and to fear Him. And to fear Him. And that narration likewise, that a person, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intends to take his soul in a particular land, He will cause that person to have a need to go there. He'll cause that person to have a need to go there. Maybe a person, it's decreed for him to die uh, in, this, in this particular land, but he's not there. Whenever that time draws near that Allah has decreed for him to die, he will have a need to go to that place. He's thinking he's going to go to visit his family, or going to go to the store, or he's going to go for a visit, or he's going to go make umrah, he's going to go do this, he's going to go to that. This is what he thinks. He has a need in his heart, thinking he's going to take care of this business, but in reality, Allah has drawn him to this land so that the angel will meet him there and take his soul, because it has been decreed that he will die at that place. 
at that place and he's not there yet. So whenever that time draws near, جَعَلَ اللَّهُ فِي نَفْسِهِ حَاجَةً إِلَىٰ أَنْ يَكُونَ فِي هَذَا الْمَكَانِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put in his heart, put in his heart and his soul a need to go to that place. And he will go to that place and the angel, and the angel will take his life in that place, in that manner. In that place, in that manner. And none of us know when that will be or where that will be. But what is important again is how that will be. How that will be. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us a long life upon his obedience. But a person, he should not live a life of false whims and false hopes. He should not live a life of false whims and false hopes, rather a life of striving in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, hoping, hoping to, to die a good death. Hoping to die a good death and that a person's life will be accepted from Allah Azza wa Jalla. When yakuna sa'yuhu mashkuran. When yakuna sa'yuhu mashkuran. That his effort, his life, his life, you have a life, I have a life. The, some people, their life is accepted from Allah. And in the hereafter, they're pardoned and forgiven. And they're shown great mercy and, 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 and kindness. And others, they are rejected and they're not accepted. And they are not shown mercy. Rather, they are punished and humiliated. And uh, they, are, they are left in agony and, and pain and regret. So this life is a life of striving. This is life is a life of, of effort. And uh, although it's a life of striving, and making great effort, also a person, if he's sincere, he can also have joy in, in doing that and a good life before the, the good life in, in the hereafter. Before the good life in the hereafter. After this, the author, he says, Rahimahullahu ta'ala, wa nu'minu bi anna Allah yatakallamu bima sha'a mata sha'a kayfa sha'a. And we believe that Allah, he speaks with whatever he wills, whenever he wills, and however he wills. We believe that Allah, he speaks uh, we believe that Allah, uh, He speaks with whatever He wills, whenever He wills, and however He wills. وَكَلَّمَ اللَّهُ مُوسَى تَقْلِيمًا وَلَمَّا جَاءَ مُوسَى لِمِقَاتِنَا وَكَلَّمَهُ رَبُّهُ وَنَادَيْنَاهُ مِنْ جَانِبِ الطُّورِ الْأَيْمَنِ وَقَرَّبَنَاهُ نَجِيًّا وَقَرَّبَنَاهُ نَجِيًّا He mentioned now the issue of the attribute of the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal. From the attributes of our Lord is that He speaks. He speaks as the author he mentions, يَتَكَلَّمُ بِمَا شَاءَ He speaks with whatever he, with whatever he wills. Any, in any language he wants to speak in subhanahu wa ta'ala. In, in any, in, however, he, however he wants. And with, with whatever he wills. مَتَى شَاءَ Whenever he wills. وَكَيْفَ شَاءَ And however he wills. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he speaks and he speaks with whatever he wills. And he speaks whenever he wills. And he speaks however he wills. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And his speech, subhanahu wa ta'ala, bi sawtin wa harf. Masmu'a. Bi sawtin masmu'a wa harf. And he with the sound and, and, and with letters. He speaks in a manner befitting his majesty. Allah has affirmed for himself that he speaks. And we see in these verses that are mentioned here. And therefore we affirm that Allah, he speaks in a manner befitting his majesty. Allah, he says, and unto Musa, Allah spoke directly. Wa kallama Musa. Taklima and Allah wa kallam Allah Musa taklima and Allah He spoke to Musa directly and Allah He spoke to Musa directly. Wa lama jaa Musa imiqatina wa kallama hu Rabbuhu and when Musa came at that time and place appointed by us and his Lord Allah spoke to him and his Lord Allah spoke to him. So here Allah is saying that He spoke to Musa. So therefore we say that Allah spoke to Musa. So we affirm now that Allah speaks, that Allah speaks in a manner befitting His Majesty, in a manner befitting His Majesty. And we called Him from the right side of the mount and made Him draw near to us for a talk with Him. يعني a private council and a private talk. And we called Him. For the first is a call. So Allah, He speaks in this manner. He called Musa. The call is out loud. And then uh, the, the munajat is a private council and quiet between, uh, between, indi between, between uh, individuals. So Allah, He spoke to Musa in this manner, calling him out loud and likewise had a private council with him. The point is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks and we believe, we believe that our Lord, He speaks to whom He wills in the, man the manner that He wills, whenever He wills and whatever way He wills, subhanahu wa ta'ala. After this, the author, he mentioned, Rahimahullahu ta'ala, wa nu'minu bi annahu, law kana al-bahru midada li karimati rabbi, na nafid al-bahru qabra an tanfada karimatu rabbi. 
And ولو أن ما في الأرض من شجرة أقلام والبحر يمده من بعده سبعة أبحر ما نفدت كلمات الله إن الله عزيز حكيم. And likewise we believe that uh, and likewise we believe that if the sea were ink for writing in the words of my Lord, surely if the sea were ink for writing the words of my Lord, surely the sea would be exhausted before the words of my Lord would be finished. And he meaning that the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is encompassing knowledge. And uh, it cannot be it cannot be enumerated, the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Walaw anna ma fi al-ardi min shajaratin aqlamun wal bahru yamudduhu min ba'dihi sab'atu abhurin ma nafidat kalimatullah. Inna allaha azizun hakim. And if all of the trees on the earth were pins and the sea were ink, there wherewith to write with seven seas behind it to its supply, yet the words of Allah would not be exhausted. Verily, Allah is almighty. All wise. So therefore we affirm the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the manner befitting His Majesty. Bisotin wa harf. Bisotin wa harf. Yukalimu man sha'a, mata sha'a, kayfa sha'a, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He speaks to whom He wills, however He wills, whenever He wills. Tabaraka wa ta'ala in a manner befitting His Majesty. In a manner befitting His Majesty. So again, if we were to discuss the, the details and the benefits of each one of these verses, then the, the classes they would prolong uh, for a, a long period. But now our point is just to take the general understanding to see that these verses here clarify our creed and belief with regards to the beautiful names and lofty attributes of perfection of Allah Azza wa Jal and uh, clarifying His Rububiyyah and His Al Asma'i wa Sifat and His Uluhiyya subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these verses here are clarifying the traits of Allah Azza wa Jal, His Sifat. Min Sifatihi annahu yatakallam. Aw anna lahu kalam. Subhanahu wa ta'ala is from his attributes is that he speaks and that he has speech that is uh, befitting of his majesty Subhanahu wa ta'ala after this the author he says uh, likewise rahimahullahu uh, ta'ala wa nu'minu wa nu'minu bi anna karimatihi atamma al-karimat wa nu'minu bi anna karimatihi atammu al-karimati sidqan fi al-akhbari wa adlan fi al-ahkam wa husna fi al-hadithi qala Allahu ta'ala wa tammat karimatu rabbika sidqan wa adlan wa qala wa man asdaqu min Allahi haditha wa man asdaqu min Allahi haditha and likewise we believe that his words are the most perfect of words and uh, the truest in its narrations and the most just in its rulings and the best speech and uh, the best speech and Allah the most high he mentions uh, the meaning of which is, and the word of your Lord has been fulfilled in truth and justice. وَتَمَّتْ كَرِمَةُ رَبِّكَ صِدْقًا وَعَدَلًا And this is the description of the words of Allah. We affirm that Allah, He speaks, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and likewise we believe that His words are the most perfect words, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the most truest uh, uh, of narrations. And likewise that the rulings and the judgments that He speaks with and that He has ordered and commanded, subhanahu wa ta'ala, are the most just. There's no lies in the words of Allah or deviation, and there's no oppression or transgression in His rulings and judgments. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rather, tammat wa tammat karimatu rabbika sidqan wa adala. The words of uh, your Lord, the words of your Lord have been fulfilled in truth and in justice. The words of your Lord have been fulfilled in truth and in justice. And Allah says, وَمَنْ أَسْدَقُ مِنَ اللَّهِ hadith." And who is truer in statement than Allah? who is truer in statement than Allah. So the author, he mentioned these verses here, وَتَمَّتْ كَرِمَاتُ رَبِّكَ صِدْقًا وَعَدَلًا And the words of your Lord have been fulfilled in truth and justice. In truth and justice. The author, he's clarifying briefly here what, it, what this means. وَنُؤْمِنُ بِأَنَّ كَرِمَاتِهِ أَتَمُّ الْكَرِمَاتِ صِدْقًا فِي الْأَخْبَارِ وَعَدْلًا فِي الْأَحْكَامِ and we believe that his words, subhanahu wa ta'ala, are the most complete words, and they're the truest in the, the information, and the most just in the rulings. And he saw Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his karimat, and he speaks with information, informing us uh, of affairs, and this information is the truest, and the most complete and perfect information, with no lies or, or, or foolishness found therein whatsoever. And likewise, whenever he speaks, he speaks with orders and commandments, subhanahu wa ta'ala, that are judgments and rulings. And they're the most just and upright judgments and rulings with no deviation and with no oppression or transgression found in them whatsoever. Sidqan wa adala. So he's saying, Sidqan fil akhbar, 
صدقا في الأخبار وعادلا في الأحكام وعادلا في الأحكام The author he mentions now ونؤمن بأن القرآن الكريم كلام الله تعالى تكلم به حقا والقاه إلى جبريل فنزل به جبريل على قلب النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم صلى الله عليه وسلم We believe that the noble Quran is the speech of Allah and uh, he spoke it in truth and he, Allah he spoke the Quran in truth and he gave it to uh, Jibreel who brought it down upon the heart of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he spoke the Quran the, the Quran is the words of Allah he spoke it subhanahu wa ta'ala with speech uh, in a manner befitting his majesty he spoke it to Jibreel who, re, who, who descended upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and revealed it to him and revealed it to him, the author, he mentioned the statement of Allah, the Most High, قُلْ نَزَّلَهُ رُوحُ الْقُدُسِ مِنْ رَبِّكَ بِالْحَقِّ And likewise, the statement of Allah, the Most High, وَإِنَّهُ لَتَنْزِيلُ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ نَزَلَ بِهِ الرُوحُ الْأَمِينَ عَلَى قَالْبِكَ لِتَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُنْذِرِينَ بِلِسَانٍ عَرَبِيًّ مُبِينَ بِلِسَانٍ عَرَبِيًّ Mubin. The meaning of these verses are, Say, O Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Holy Spirit has brought it down from your Lord in truth to make firm those who believe and as a guide and glad tidings to, uh, to the Muslims. And as a guidance uh, and glad tidings to, to the Muslims. قُلْ نَزَّلَهُ رُوحُ الْقُدُسِ مِنْ رَبِّكَ بِالْحَقِّ بِالْحَقِّ And, uh, you, you, and uh, the Holy Spirit has brought it down from your Lord in truth, in truth. لِيُثَبِّتَ لِيُثَبِّتَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَهُدًا وَبُشْرًا لِلْمُسْلِمِينَ And the verse, it continues. The verse, it continues. لِيُثَبِّتَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَهُدًا وَبُشْرًا لِلْمُسْلِمِينَ Say to them, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Holy Spirit has brought it down from you, meaning Jibreel, Ruh al-Qudus. Jibreel, he has brought it down from your Lord in truth to make firm those who believe and as a guidance in good tidings, Glad tidings to the Muslims. And likewise, the statement of Allah the Most High, uh, the meaning of which is, and truly this Quran is a revelation from the Lord of all that exists, which the trustworthy Ruh, meaning Jibreel alayhi salam, has brought down upon your heart, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that you may be one of the warners in the plain Arabic language, in the plain Arabic language. So all of this is uh, emphasizing the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the clarification that this is from the attributes of Allah azza wa jal and likewise now that the Quran is the speech of Allah. That the Quran is the speech of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he spoke the Quran. This is from his speech, from his words. Tabaraka wa ta'ala. So Al-Quran kalam Allah ghayru makhluq. The Quran is the speech of Allah and it's not created. Min hu bada'a wa ilayhi ya'ud. It came from him and it will return to him subhanahu wa ta'ala so this is our creed and this is our belief the Quran is a speech of Allah from the speech of Allah the Quran likewise the Torah and the Injil and the Zabur all of these are from the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the final revelation is the revelation of the Quran and it is kalam Allahi ghayru makhluq ghayru makhluq it is the speech of Allah and it is not created it is not created Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he is the one who spoke these words and he is the one who revealed these words and these are the words of of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he mentioned uh, after this rahimahullah uh, ta'ala wa nu'minu bi anna Allah azza wa jal aliyun ala khalqihi bi dhatihi wa sifatihi li qawlihi ta'ala wa huwa al-aliyu al-azim wa qawlihi wa huwa al-qahiru fawqa ibadihi wa huwa al-hakimu al-khabir he says rahimahullah ta'ala and we believe and we believe that Allah the most high is Aliyun ala khalqihi bi dhatihi wa sifatihi that Allah is lofty and high above his creation in his essence and likewise in his attributes in his, in his essence and in his in his attributes and this is based upon the statement of Allah the Most High wa huwa al-aliyu al-azim and this is in reference to the attribute of al-ulu wa al-azama yani al-ulu al-ulu specifically Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lahu ulu al-dhat wa ulu al-qadr wa ulu al-qahr Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has al-ulu al-mutlaq. Yani uh, al-ulu is the lofty, and, the lofty and high status. Yani his essence is lofty and high, high above his creation. Allah azza wa jal, al-ali al-a'la. Al-ali al-a'la, he is the most high. And he meaning Allah himself. Bithatihi fawqa makhluqatihi. A'la, al-a'la subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is in ulu, he is high and lofty above his creation. Allah is high and lofty above 
His creation. Allah is not in the creation. Allah is not in the creation. Allah, He is high above the creation. His essence, His dad, His life. He Himself, subhanahu wa ta'ala, is above the creation. And likewise, He has ulu al-qadr, any meaning that He has a high and lofty status and rank. This is what He's referring to here. Ulu with that, wa ulu asifat. Asifat, yani al-qadr wa al-qahr. Al-qadr wa al-qahr. The qadr, yani makana. He's high above his creation himself, and likewise his authority and command and his status is high. He's high and lofty in all of his attributes. No one can overcome him whatsoever, none of his attributes. His knowledge is the highest level, is the highest knowledge, and his wisdom is the highest, and his mercy and his forgiveness, his power, his authority, his might, his honor, his majesty, it's all the highest. Al-A'la, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sabih isma rabbika al-A'la. He is the most high. In all of his attributes and in all of his his actions, nothing is higher or greater than him. Subhanahu wa taala. Walahu ulu al qahr. Likewise, al qahr yani al ghalaba, yani al ghalaba. No, no one can overcome him. No one can escape him. No, no one can, no one can can flee from him. No one can 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 get over uh, on Allah Subhanahu wa taala or go around his commandments or avoid him. Rather, all of us are his slaves and under his command and returning back to him and under his authority. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, we don't even know when we will die. We don't even know where we will die. We don't even know how we will die. We just hope that Allah will bless us to die in a good way. Subhanallah. Allah, He is the most powerful and strong and has supreme authority and command, and no one can resist Him nor hide from Him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are the verses that He mentions here. And He is the most high, the most great. And he is the irresistible, supreme above his slaves. And he is the all-wise, well acquainted with all things. Well acquainted with all things. Alhamdulillah, we suffice with that this evening. And if anyone has any questions or comments or corrections, then we can discuss them now uh, briefly before the, uh, the iqamah. Does anyone who has any questions with, that, with regards to that which has preceded? Any questions with regards to that which has preceded? If that's the case, then we review. Barakallah fikum. So what are the four affairs that we must avoid and stay away from with regards to believing in the names and attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal? Habib. Uh-huh. In Arabic. at tahrif which means? Distorting, distorting the, 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 the terms or the meanings of the terms, or both, yani. Naam. تحريف التعطيل التعطيل من عطلة يعطل عطل تعطيلا تعطيل means to deny to deny the attribute so we do not distort the attribute nor do we deny them do we do not distort the attributes nor do we deny them we don't distort the text any change in the meanings and uh, nor do we deny the attributes deny the attributes this is two of them التحريف والتعطيل التحريف والتعطيل التحريف is من حرف يحرف يحرف تحريفا التعطيل is from عطل يعطل عطل تعطيلا then we have after that huh? التمثيل uh -huh. أحسنت التمثيل and in the arrangement that we took before that was تكييف تكييف is from كيف يكيف كيف تكييفا this is to ask how or try to delve into the issue of how the reality of the attributes are of how the attributes are, we, we avoid that. Which this is not allowed. This is not allowed. And at tamthil, from methada you methil methil tamthil, and to to make tamthil is to make a resemblance or a comparison to the creation, comparison to the creation. So we avoid all of these affairs here. We avoid all of these affairs. We do not distort the the terms nor the meanings. We do not distort the terms nor the meanings. We do not make the the the, the, the we do not change them from the apparent meaning. We do not say that uh, hearing means this, or love means that. We don't say that love means wanting to do good or intending to do good. Or we don't say that hating means intending to punish. La, we say hating means hate, and loving means love. And these terms are well known in, in the Arabic language. And mahabba is known, the meaning of that. The meaning of that is known. And al bughd or al karaha these words, these terms, they have a meaning in the Arabic language that it's clear and apparent, and that meaning is known. That meaning is known. So we affirm that meaning. We affirm that meaning. But as for how it is with regards to Allah, this part we do not know. So we do not change the meaning, to distort the meaning 
Because if we would distort the meaning, then we would in reality be denying it. So this is how they deny, this is how the attributes of Allah are denied. Some people, they're bold enough to just simply deny them. He say, he doesn't have a face. Or he doesn't hear. Like, like, like some of the deviant sects, they say, Sami'un bila sam'in, basirun bila basr, alimun bila ilmin, rahimun bila rahmah. What do you have to be learned? That Allah, He sees without, he, He's the all-seeing without seeing. And He's the all-hearing without hearing. He's the all-knowing without knowledge. And subhanAllah. And he, He's the all-knowing, they affirm His name, but they say He doesn't have knowledge. And that He's the all-hearing, they affirm the name, but He, he doesn't hear. And if they deny, this from the, the ways of the Jahmiyyah, to deny the attributes. Other, they're, others, they're not so bold to just directly deny it. Rather, they will go uh, around about way by misinterpreting the text and changing and distorting the meaning, which in reality is denying the attribute, is denying the attribute, which is in reality is denying the attribute. Whenever they say that uh, Allah, you, uh, Allah, who you hibbu al-muhsinin, Allah, he loves the muhsinin. They say Allah, they say this means that Allah, you read al-ihsan ilayhim. Allah, he wants to do good to them. That's what it means. So in reality, they're saying that Allah, he doesn't love. So they're denying the attribute of love. The, 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 they're denying the attribute of life. We understand this part. So we do not make tahrif and distort the meanings and or distort the terms likewise. And we do not uh, make ta'thil and deny the meanings and deny the attributes. And also we do not make takif. We do not ask how or delve, delve into how the reality of these attributes are. But rather with regards to the kaif, there's a, a very uh, easy principle to understand and that is that we affirm it in a manner befitting the majesty of Allah Azza wa Jal. كَمَا يَلِيكُ بِجَلَالِهِ وَعَظَمَتِهِ سُبْحَانُهُ وَتَعَى This is the answer to kayf. This is the answer to kayf. We do not delve into the takif and into asking how or thinking about how or trying to comprehend how or imagine how. Rather, we say in a manner befitting His majesty. It's beyond our understanding. Allah is greater than that. Whatever you can think of or imagine, or whatever has been thought of or imagined, or whatever will be thought of or imagined, it cannot be. Allah, Allah is greater than that. Allah Akbar. Min hadha. Allah Akbar. He's, alim, a'la. He's, he's greater, higher, more lofty than whatever you could imagine, whatever you can think of or perceive. That's not Him. That's not Him. He's greater than that. He's greater than that. So we have been encouraged by the Salaf is Salih, by a Salaf is Salih, that we have been encouraged and informed and ordered that we should not ponder over the Creator because a person who will go astray. He'll be misled and disbelieve. But we ponder over the creation. And from here we realize the majesty and the greatness of the creator. The majesty and the greatness of the creator. Because we cannot comprehend the, the, the creator. We're not able to comprehend and think about how he is. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our minds are limited. We cannot reach that high and lofty status. We cannot reach that high and lofty level. So what do we do? What are we ordered to do? To ponder and to reflect over the creation. And this is what the Quran calls us to likewise. To ponder over the creation. In this manner we'll be able to comprehend and realize the greatness of the creator. The greatness of the creator. The greatness and the authority and command and the mercy and the supreme knowledge and the ability to do all things of our creator subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we do not ask how. How, is, how does he hear? How does he see? How is his life? How, how, we, don't, we don't ask these things. The answer for this is Hmm? In a manner befitting His Majesty. How is His face? In a manner befitting His Majesty. His hands? In a manner befitting His Majesty. His feet? In a, in a manner befitting His Majesty. Not like anything in the creation. Not like anything in the creation. So therefore these attributes, what do we do? We make ithbat bila tashbih. Ithbatun bila tashbih. Wa tanzihun bila ta'thil. So there's these things that we have to avoid. This ta'thil, denying the attributes. And likewise, tashbih, likening or resembling the attributes to the creation. We do not deny them entirely, nor do we liken them to the creation. These are two foul and lowly ways. These are two foul and lowly ways. The deviants, those who have deviated with regards to the creed and belief and the aqidah and the asma'i Allah sifatihi, they went away in these manners. By denying the attributes, making ta'thil, or by or by resembling the attributes of the creation, making tashbih. So there's the mu'atlida, there's the mu'atlida, the jahmiya, and the likes of them, and there are different deviant sects that have, that have branched off from them, and then there's mushabbiha, the mushabbiha, the mumafila, those who liken the creator to the creation. What do you have to So these are both foul ways. As for the, the proper way, the proper way is to affirm the attributes without liking them to the creation, and to free Allah from any defects without denying the attributes. So the, the Mu'atila, they denied the attributes and did not affirm them. 
and the mushabbiha, they affirm the attributes and deny free Allah from resembling the creation. So this is a foul way and that is a foul way. As for Ahl Sunnah, yuthbituna as sifat kama taliku bi jalalihi wa azamatihi min ghayri tashbihin. Min ghayri bash tashbihin min, min makhluqatihi. You understand that? That we affirm these attributes that have come in a manner befitting the majesty of Allah Azza wa Jalla without likening to the creation whatsoever. So there's an affirmation without resemblance. There's affirmation without resemblance. What's the proof for that? You affirm the attributes without resembling to the creation. What's the proof for that? لَيْسَ كَمِتَ لِهِ شَيْءٍ وَهُوَ سَمِيعٌ بَصِيرٌ حَسَنَتَ فَقِيهٌ حَمْدُ لِلَّهِ زَاكَ اللَّهُ خَيْرٌ لَيْسَ كَمِتَ لِهِ شَيْءٍ وَهُوَ سَمِيعٌ بَصِيرٌ There's nothing like unto him whatsoever and he is the all-hearing and the all-seeing. So we affirm the attributes that Allah affirmed for himself but we do not liken them to the creation. وَتَنْزِيهٌ بِلَا تَعْطِيلٌ And we free Allah from any defects from any faults, from any resemblance to the creation without denying the attribute. Without denying the attribute. How can you say Allah doesn't have hands? And Allah, He said He has hands. Allah, He affirmed it in more than one verse. In more than one verse. And the Prophet affirmed it in more than one narration. Rather, the hands of Allah have been affirmed in the Quran and in the Sunnah. And they have been described in the Quran and the Sunnah. And the hands have been described, described as having a clutch. Huh? He has a right. Both of his hands are. And the, both of my, the, the hands of my Lord uh, are yameen. And he, both of them are powerful and strong. Both of them are powerful and strong. And then likewise, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, uh, he said, and likewise, the hands of Allah have been described as having fingers. So all of these affairs are established in, in, in the Quran and in the Sunnah. We establish them. But they're not like the hands and the fingers, nor the clutches of the human being, or anything in the creation, or anything in the creation. We understand this part. We affirm that because Allah he affirmed that. Allah he said that about himself. How could somebody say, no, it doesn't mean that? How could somebody say, no, it doesn't mean that? Any, uh, do, you, do, you, do you have more knowledge than Allah Azza wa Jal? Do you have more knowledge than, 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 than His Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? No, we affirm what Allah He affirmed for Himself. Allah He said that, we say that. But we do not liken it to the creation. There's no resemblance to Him whatsoever. لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِ هِي شَيْءٍ وَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ كُفُوْ كُفُوْ وَنَحَدْ وَنْ يَكُلْ لَهُ كُفُوْ وَنَحَدْ These verses, this is what this means here. These are verses, وَهَلْ تَعْلَمُ لَهُ سَمِيَّةٍ all of these verses here clarifying that there's no resemblance to Allah whatsoever. There's no, there's no comparisons, there's no examples, there's nothing like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whatsoever. But He has the attributes of perfection. So we affirm them for Him in a manner befitting His majesty in the most perfect in the most perfect and complete, in the complete understanding. And uh, as for negation from him, then we negate from him all attributes of deficiency and weakness. And in negating these attributes of deficiency and weakness is in reality affirming its complete opposite. So we do not, that, that, that which is negated from Allah is not simple negation. That which is negated from Allah Azza wa from attributes of weakness or deficiency or, or foul and lowly characteristics, they're not just simply negated, rather they're negated along with affirming the complete, uh, the complete opposite. Huh? نَنْفِ أَنْهُ أَنَّ قَعِسْ وَالْعُيُوبِ مَا إِثْبَاتِ كَمَالِ ضِدِّهَا مَا إِثْبَاتِ كَمَالِ ضِدِّهَا Along with the complete affirmation of the complete perfect perfectness of its opposite. Allah Azza wa Jal, He does not die. He, he does not die. Huh? So that means His life is perfect. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَلَا يَنْسَى Allah, He doesn't forget. He doesn't forget. What's the verse in Surah Taha? My Lord, He doesn't go astray, nor does He forget. Meaning, He's upon perfect guidance, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and His knowledge is perfect. He does not forget. His knowledge is perfect. His, he does not forget. So, by negating this here, and no, no fatigue befalls us or touches us, meaning that His life is perfect and His power is complete and strong. His power is completely strong. So by negating this weakness here, we must affirm in the neg in negation of this weakness and this fault is the affirmation of his complete opposite. 
of its complete opposite. These are all some of the principles that the people of knowledge have clarified with regards to believing in Allah Azza wa Some of them after uh, the author, he mentions these evidences here and that which we believe with regards to our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. He mentions some of these principles and we discuss them inshallah when the time comes. Had that wa sallallahu ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.